this is lecture 11, part three, the last part, and is specifically dedicated to limiting reagents, also called limiting reactants. Let's see, where are we here? All right, so this is the slide I showed in, in lecture. Again, I'm going to be going through what it is and then working through lots of problems uh, in this lecture. The point of limiting reagent is when you're given two amounts, you have two reactants, you're given the amount of each of them, you have to determine which one's going to run out first. When that runs out, the reaction is over, it stopped, we can't make any more because you've just lost one of your ingredients. So it's, it's really, if you just go through step by step by step, it's one of those, you do the same thing every time, it removes the mystery and you'll, you'll have it down. You just, again, practicing. Um, we use the reaction equation, molar relationship, the stoichiometry to determine this. And uh, as I've said in lecture, there are two different ways to do it. I use what is called the slower way, but I'll show you both. Because some people are able to use the ratio way quite comfortably, so I, you use what works for you with this one. Okay. So I'm going to work through these slides, but first let's just talk about, I keep talking about my cakes instead of the bicycles, which are in the slides. You know, so if you have a recipe and it's, all right, let's, let's, let's start properly. And it calls for one cup of flour plus two eggs will give you one cake. Plus you need other things, but you need to have a cup of flour and two eggs to make a cake. And in a reaction, this would be an arrow. So you check your refrigerator or your cupboard the day of baking and you say, okay, I have four cups of flour and I have six eggs. Hmm, time to go to the store. How many cakes can I make? This is the same process you use for limiting reagent, what I'm about to do. I say, okay, I have four cups of flour. Start with what you're given. And for every one cup of flour, right, I can make one cake. So I can make four cakes today with the amount of flour I have. What about my eggs? I have six eggs. Really time to go to the store, go talk to those chickens. For every two eggs, I can make one cake. So I can make three cakes using the eggs I have. So how many cakes can I make? Three. Because once I've made three cakes, I will have no eggs left, but I will still have one cup of flour left, right? Because I use three cups of flour to make three cakes. All right, let's go down here. So I'm going to make three cakes. So that's the six eggs, right? Because that's what's limiting. The six eggs are the limiting. So I said, all right, I have six eggs. I'm going to use them all up. For every two eggs I use, I'm going to use one cup of flour. Right? So that means I'm going to use three cups of flour. I had four at the beginning of the day. So at the end of the day, I will have one cup of flour, zero eggs, and I will have three lovely cakes. Yum. I like to bake. That's, that is limiting reagent. That's how it works. It's just we're using it with, chemi with chemicals and formulas instead of flour and eggs, but it's the same exact principle. How much can I make of my product? What's my limiting? Okay, using my limiting, how much of the excess do I use and what do I have left at the end of the day? This is exactly what you're going to do, but you're going to do it with chemicals. 
All right, so now let's move on to the chemicals. But really, this is, this is, so think eggs and flour and cakes if it helps you simplify it, make it less kind of weird or scary. No, I didn't do the ratio method with that. Oh, well. So, where'd my black pen go? I already lost my, there it is, my marker, my new marker. All right, so this is the example we're going to use throughout a lot of these. And again, I'm leaving off the phases for space issue. So propane with oxygen, five oxygen, that's a five, not an S, gives me three carbon dioxide, four water, and 200 kilojoules. So it's exothermic, kilojoules are a product. And there's my stoichiometry. So we're told, well, you walk in that day and you have five moles of this, of hydrocarbon, and 30 moles of oxygen. Okay. You have to know how much product you can make. Instead of eggs and flour, we're using chemicals, but it's the same thing. The ratio method is this. You take the ratio of your reaction and you compare it to the ratio of what you have. Start with the higher number. So in the reaction, I have five moles of oxygen for every one mole of hydrocarbon, propane. So we have a five to one ratio, five oxygens for every one hydrocarbon. Okay. What do I actually have of oxygen? I have 30 moles and I have five moles of, of uh, propane. So this is a six to one ratio. So yes, I have enough oxygen. I need at least five oxygens for every one hydrocarbon. I have six. So I have enough oxygen. Therefore, my limiting reagent must be my propane. Now I'm going to double check that with the method I like to use, the um, considered the slow way. I just am more comfortable with it. And that's using what we're given to calculate product, just like the cakes, and see which one will give us less product, because that's the one that's going to run out first. So start with your, and it's nice that we're given moles, start with your moles of hydrocarbon, of propane. Choose one of the product. It does not matter if it's carbon dioxide, water, or even energy, as long as you choose the same one for both. Identity change. You know, I'm going to do this a second time with the energy just to show you how it would work. Um, but for the moment, I'm going to use the carbon dioxide. For some reason, I always do. Moles. Pull my numbers out of the reaction equation. I have one mole of propane and three moles of carbon dioxide. So that gives me 15 moles of carbon dioxide I can make with my starting amount of propane. All right, what about my starting amount of oxygen? So 30 moles of oxygen. Again, identity switch. We're going to go from oxygen to carbon dioxide. Using the relationship defined here, five moles of oxygen, of course, three moles of, of that. So do the math and you end up with 18 moles of CO2. So I can make 15 moles of carbon dioxide with propane and then we're out of propane. We are out. So you're never going to make it to 18 moles. 
even though you have enough oxygen because once you've made 15, everything stops. So that's the maximum amount you can make. And yes, the propane is a limiting arrangement. I just want to do this with um, the energy just because I just did the energy lecture and I think, why not? So you start the same way. I'm gonna start with the hydrocarbon. But this time, since I'm doing energy, that's my unit that I put up there. My numbers come from this, one mole of this, 200 kilojoules. When I, and then I'll do the math. When I do this, so that's 1,000 kilojoules. So my moles of oxygen down here, my unit is kilojoules. What are my numbers? Five moles of oxygen, 200 kilojoules. And that is going to be, I'm going to do it in the calculator so I don't make a stupid mistake. Right, 1,200 kilojoules. So even when you're using energy, this works. Any of the products it will work with. And once again, you can only generate 1,000 kilojoules. So propane is our limiting reagent. So that is the first step. When you're doing limiting reagents, I'll write these out. The step one, first of all, if you need to, you convert ev everything to moles because you have to be in moles to do this. So I'll call it step one half, right? So step one, find a limiting. Either by the determine calculating the product or by the ratio method. So step two is usually you are asked to calculate product amount using, you must use the limiting reagent amount. If you use the other one, you've just made a mistake. The other one we're now calling an excess or the excess amount. Um, Often then the question you're asked is how much of the excess is left over or how much was used. So calculate how much of the excess reactant used. So you use that with your limiting arrangement using limiting, using limiting reagent amount. Same set of steps, same sequences. And then if you are asked how much excess is left over, usually are, subtract excess, I'm calling it the excess, the one that's not the limiting reagent, we're calling the excess consumed in step three from starting amounts. When you do this one, you're doing mixed math. So watch your sig figs. You're doing a combination of multiplication division and then subtraction. So be careful for the step four, you have to watch your sig figs. Um, I showed in the lecture, keep track of of the number of sig figs and the placement. So these are your steps. I did this making the cake and we're doing this with our chemicals. Okay, nice thing about this being recorded is I can erase this. So I found out the limiting and I found out how much carbon dioxide and I erased it. It was 15. Okay, 
So, and you can figure out the water. It's the same steps. Because I'm going to go now to um, another one. The next, the next slide. And I might be coming back to this one, I don't remember. So this question is saying mass to mass because we're going to start with grams. So keep that list in front of you of the steps I just wrote and you can pause and write it down. And I never know when I'm doing this video if that corner is covered up or not. So here's what it is. Here's the reaction. But I have to move it back up, unfortunately. So we have another combustion reaction. We have a hydrocarbon and oxygen giving us CO2 and water. Again, not putting phases in for space limitation. And the question says, what mass is produced what mass of CO2 from 10.0 grams of the hydrocarbon and 20.0 grams of the oxygen. Now notice these are three sig figs. They have a right hand to zero on the other side of the decimal place. The only reason that's there is because it's significant. What's the first thing you do? You should, you should hear my voice in the sleep saying this, convert to moles. So we'll start with the hydrocarbon. And there's my, my mass is 78. I'm looking at the slide. Okay, they actually went straight through, which we can do. Actually, I'm gonna do it differently than them. First, I need to find my limiting. So I will keep going. I've converted to moles. And I want to know how much CO2 I'm, I make. Because I'm looking for limiting, I'm only going to go as far as the moles of CO2 right now. Because then I'll determine what's my limiting and I'll go further. So I have two moles of hydrocarbon and I have 12 moles of CO2. So this is going to be off my board. So I'm doing it differently than what the slide shows. So it's 10 times 12, 120, divided by parentheses, 78.1 times two, exit parentheses equals. So I'm going to write it up here because I'm out of room. So it's equal to 0 0.7682 moles of carbon dioxide. This is my carbon dioxide. Okay. So how much can be made with the oxygen? 20 grams of oxygen. My brain's getting ahead of itself. Times, I'm going to convert to moles. And it's 32.0 for one. Go ahead and convert identity and let's just see how many moles of carbon dioxide are made. Fifteen moles of oxygen for every 12 CO2. Do the math. So it's 20 times 12 equals divided by parentheses 32 times 15. That's some big numbers. Equals. So I get 0 0.5, but of course it's not 0 0.5, is it? 0 0.500 moles. So what's my limiting? 
It's the one that makes less carbon dioxide. Because once I've made 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide, my oxygen is gone. So this is my limiting. Okay. So the question is what mass of carbon dioxide is produced? Well, we know that you can only make 0.5 moles. So now you just convert the 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide because that's my limiting and so that's how much I actually make. I do not make that. I never can get there. Once I get to 0.5, it's gone. Don't forget your zeros. And then convert back to grams because that's what the question asked for. And that is, where is carbon dioxide? Oh, must be on the next slide. 44, right, 32, yeah. And that's gonna basically give me 22.0 grams of CO2. Okay, so that's the answer to that. First, I determined my limiting reagent, then I use that amount to calculate the grams. Since I used the slower method, quote unquote, which I prefer, I already had part of my answer. I just had to convert to grams. So I think in the long run, it's not slower, but that's just me. Okay, this is one I did in lecture, but I will do it again. It's fairly long, so it's a good practice. Again, this is off the slide. So first, we're going to balance this. So octane. Once again, for interests of space, not putting phases in. All right, I'm going to do my inventory to balance it. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. How many carbons? I have eight. 18 hydrogens and two oxygen. It's nice that they're all in one place. I will do my oxygen last because it's by itself. It makes life easier. I have one carbon. I have two hydrogens and I have two plus one, I have three oxygens. I break it up like this because when I go into balance, it makes it much easier. Okay, I'm going to start with my carbon. I have eight, well, eight here, one there. So I'm gonna put an eight up here. I always redo my numbers when I make a change. If you just try to change one or two, it, it can be lead to confusion. It's just much better to rewrite everything. So I have eight carbons. I still only have eight, two hydrogens. And I have 16 plus one. Plus, as you're doing this re-inventory, you sometimes start to see what you need to change. You start to recognize patterns of what you need to change to make this balance. So I have 17 oxygens. Okay, my carbons are good. Let's do the hydrogen. I have 18 here, two here. So I'm gonna put my nine up here. Once again, I've only changed the right side. So I still have eight carbons. I now have 18 hydrogens and I have 16 plus one still, oh, see, made a mistake. 16, but I have nine high oxygens now, so I have 25. Okay, I have the right number of carbons and oxygen and uh, hydrogens. I have two oxygens, but they're by they're diatomic, so that's handy. We can work with that. 25 over here. So in order to make this 25, I multiply it by 25 over two because that two will cancel out with that two, and I have 25. So when I do that, this is now 25. 
That's the only thing I've changed, so I'm going to do that. All right. It's balanced, but we're not done. You cannot have fractions. So if I put my, my coefficients, now that I know what they are, down in front of my molecules, right? Instead of up. I always put them up higher at first. Because sometimes when you're balancing, you have to keep crossing them off and changing them. So if you put them up in the corner, it makes it easier. So it's balanced. So I'll, I'm going to erase these. I'll show you why in a minute. But I cannot have a fraction. So I have to get rid of that fraction. Now, how do I get rid of 25 over 2? How do I change that into a whole number? You multiply multiply times two, right? But I can't just multiply this times two. Anything I do to one, I have to do to all of them. So I'm going to. You multiply everything within the brackets times two. So I now have two here. I have 25 there. 2 times 8 is 16. That's a C. And 2 times 9 is 18. Okay. Now I'm going to double check. And I dropped my paper. So now let's go back and double check the inventory. 8 times 2 is 16 carbons. 36 hydrogens and 50 oxygens. No. Scratch that. Let me start over. I got myself confused because I left these brackets here. Okay. Let me get rid of my brackets because they confuse my brain. And I'm going to start over. So mentally erase the last 30 seconds. Now the brackets are gone. Now I can think. So I have 16 carbons and I have 36, but I have 25 oxygens. Let me rewrite that without that little line there. Maybe it'll make it a little clearer. But that's not right either, is it? It is 50 because it's 25 times two. So you guys aren't the only ones that get confused. I have 16 carbons, I have 32 plus oxygens, I have 18 hydrogens, and I have 18 oxygens. Do you see that? 16 times 2, 32 plus 18, and that is 50 oxygens. So I balance. Now I have to erase this and rewrite it because it's a mess. Because now we're going to use this for the limiting reagent. So it's two octane. Okay. So here's our question. If you have 95 grams of each of these, I have 95 grams of octane. I have 95 grams of oxygen. What's the limiting reactant? That's the first question. Automatically, the first thing to do is convert to moles. And my notes. Okay, here we go. 114.23. Now, I'll go ahead and keep going because I, I'm going to pick carbon dioxide for some reason I always do to figure out my limiting. So it's two moles of octane and 16 
así el chat. If I do my math. I get 6.65 moles of carbon dioxide. So 6.65 moles CO2 from my octane. In case my face is covering it. Okay. But I still want to know how many moles I have of hydrocarbon because I need to know that for later work. So it's, this is 0 0.83166 moles. Now keep in mind, this only has two sig figs. I'm not going to shorten it yet because I have more math to do and I don't want to shorten it prematurely. So the moles of hydrocarbon are 0 0.831, I will say seven though. Okay, what about the oxygen? But it's two sig figs, so I'm gonna put a line under my three to let me know it's two sig figs. Same thing with here, because that 95. of Oxygen times grams per mole. Oxygen, one mole is 32.0 grams. Let's go ahead and see how much CO2 I can make. From my reaction equation, I get 25 moles of oxygen for 16 CO2. You end up with 1.90 moles. So my oxygen will be my limiting reagent. And when I figure out how many moles of oxygen I have, because I will need it for later, calculations, it's 2.9688 moles. And again, I'm going to underline the nine to remind me that this is two sig figs. Okay, so now I know that oxygen is my limiting because it makes less CO2, which means after you make 1.90 moles of carbon dioxide, the reaction is over. You cannot make any more. We have run out of oxygen, ran out of eggs. So the question was, what's the limiting reactant? It's oxygen. Which reactant will be in excess? Remember, we call the other one the excess. It's the octane. How many grams of carbon dioxide will be produced? Well, we know how many moles are produced. So it's saying, well, how many grams? So I take my 1.90 moles. I'm underlining the nine to remind me that this is two sig figs. I'm simply going to use molar mass. I don't remember what, what is that? 32, 44, right, 44.01. And do the math. I don't think I have that on my notes. So let's do it right here. So I have 1.9 times 44.01 equals, oh, I don't have to divide by anything. Okay. 83.619 grams two sig figs. So when I report this, I'm going to report 80, because it's two sig figs, 84 grams of CO2. Okay. The next question on that slide says, how many grams of the excess reactant will be left over? That's my hydrocarbon. So I have to figure out how much I use up. Remember at the end, this will be gone. How much of this will be used up? So you do that with the relationship between oxygen and octane. 2.9688 moles of oxygen, all of which will be consumed 
And when it is consumed, how much octane will have been used? I have 25 moles of, of oxygen for every two moles of octane. Do I have that on here? I do. And you end up with 0 0.23752 moles used of the hydrocarbon, OK? Remember, we have two sig figs, not from here, but from the 95. So underline the three to remind you that you have two sig figs. All right, I started out with 0.8317. You can do this one of two ways. You can either subtract mole from mole, convert or convert this to grams, and subtract grams from grams. It doesn't matter. I'm going to subtract mole from mole. I'm curious what the other one looks like. Okay. So we started out with 0 0.8317 moles of hydrocarbon. Of octane, and you used up 0 0.23752 moles. What do we have left? You have 0 0.59414 moles left. Notice I'm underlining. This time it's placement. So this, this time it's the second digit. So if I stopped right here, my answer would be at the nine. So this is two sig figs still. So I want to turn that back into grams. Now this is remaining. Be careful not to get confused at this point. I've just calculated what was used and now I have what's remained. So when I convert this to grams, I will have what's left. If you did it the other way, convert it to grams first and then subtract grams from that. So there's two different ways to do it. But if I say 0 0.59414 moles of C8H18 times and then molar mass. And it's 114.23. And I have to do the math. So 0.59414 times 114.23 molar mass is 67.8686122. Yeah, that's what I thought. I ran out of room. Equals. 67.87 grams. Now I have two sig figs. I have two sig figs. So I have two sig figs. So my answer is going to be 68. So I have 68 grams left. At the end of my reaction, I have none of that left. I have 68 grams of that left. I have 84 grams of carbon dioxide that I made and we haven't calculated water. Okay, so there's one more I'm going to work through. By the way, if you're curious about the water, should we calculate the water really fast? How much water will get made? I'm using my moles of oxygen because my, that's my limiting. I'm going to change identity of oxygen to water using this relationship. I have 25 moles of oxygen and 18 of water. I do the math because I don't have that worked out. My ghosts are back. 2.9688 times 18 equals divided by 
25 equals 2.1, we'll call it 1.4 moles of water. And again, you would report it as 2.1 moles of water. And if we were converting that to grams, one mole is 18.02. and 38.48 grams, and of course, two sig figs. So we, we would say we have 38 grams of water, okay? So that's how you work from soup to nuts, from very, very beginning, balancing the equation, calculating everything. All right, the last example is I'm going to show you the table first. It's on the slide because this is a table you will often get um, when you get this on an exam. And also on the, the uh, lab exercise you have. Down at the bottom. There it is. Now, if I forget to take out this row, change, ignore it. I do use, so as you know, Dr. Fehler's work a lot and I, I give him tremendous thank yous. He was puts in so much work. Um, but I usually like to take out the middle column. So if I forget to, just ignore it. I'm interested in the final. What this means is that you are giving starting conditions. This is everything we've been doing. It's just in a table form starting amount of each of the reactants, right? You have to tell me what there is in, in the final. This one has energy with it. It's, let's go back to the whiteboard. It's the same thing that I have here, although this is kind of messy. I have 68 grams left. Because if you're given in grams, give the answer in grams. If the instructions forget to tell you, it's just, it's just if you are given whatever unit you're given as your starting material, you have to give the answer in that same unit. So I have 68 grams left here. I have nothing left here. I have 84 grams of carbon dioxide and 38 grams of water. So that's what you would put in that bottom row of that table. So let's work it out. This one's already a balanced reaction. That's convenient. So it's our friend propane again. And we have energy in here, 200 kilojoules. And that's a two H2O. So in case I'm blocking, there's your equation. All right, so you start with fifty-five. Oh, that's why I don't like that one. It's not dark enough. I don't think this one is either. Oh yeah, it is. Fifty-five point one grams of propane and one hundred and sixty-two grams of oxygen. So what's the first thing you do? This should be automatic at this point. If you have grams, we cannot work in grams. Stoichiometry and grams don't mix. Oil and water convert to moles. And I'm going to move up to a different slides so I have my, yeah, molar masses. So for the propane, And it is 44.09. And I will stop and get the moles part way, but I'll go ahead and find out how much carbon dioxide I'm going to use or make. And according to my reaction equation here, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot to put some numbers in. 
yeah, getting toward the end of the day, you can tell. Really important to have those numbers in there. So for every one mole of this we have, we're going to make three moles of carbon dioxide. So how much will we have? My calculator, 55.1. I'm going to go ahead and get my moles. So this part I calculated will be, I just stopped halfway, 1.2, well actually it would be 5 moles. Multiply times 3. So I get 3.75 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, what about with my oxygen? I have 162 grams of oxygen. Convert to moles. You cannot do stoichiometry with grams. I will continue, whoops, it's not a one. So that's what happens when you go too fast, like I'm doing right now. It's easy to make little mistakes that cost you in the end. Five moles of oxygen and three of carbon dioxide. Okay, let's do the math. So first I'm gonna go ahead and get the number of the moles. So this is 5.06 moles of oxygen. And now let's see how much And it's 3.04 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's my less amount. Even though it's a little bit less, it's still less. So oxygen is my limiting reagent because that was with the oxygen. And my oxygen, once it runs out, the reaction stops. Do you see that? We can only make 3.04 moles of carbon dioxide. We cannot make 3.75 because once you hit this point, the reaction's done. Okay. So now I know from all the other calculations, I'm using my oxygen. So how much, so we're filling out that table. This is the, the, the goal. And I, I am going to convert this back to grams, but how much water will I make? So you use the oxygen, you use your limiting reagent, 5.06 moles oxygen. We're interested in water. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to grams. Now that I know this is my limiting and this is going to give me the answer, the final answer I actually want. So I have five moles of oxygen for every four of water this is for water. I'm going to convert from grams to moles to gram. And I'm just going to do this in one fell swoop. So let's say 5.06 times 4 times 18.02 equals divided by 5. So I have 72.9 grams of water. And yes, we are still in three sig figs, so that's good. So my answer is 72.9 grams. Okay. I'll come back to CO2 at the end. Let's do the energy. You notice I'm keeping the oxygen set up right there. The only thing I'm changing is what goes on the top. And this time I want to talk about kilojoules. My five is from there and my 200 is from there. That's all you do. And when I do that math, you can tell it's going to be roughly 200, a little over 200. So 5.06 times 200 divided by 5. And it's 202.4. We have three sig figs. We, I'm going to assume that's three sig figs for the sake of this, this 
exercise, I'm calling that three sig figs. And so we're going to report it as 202 kilojoules. Okay. Now the last step, no, not the last step, one of the last steps. Let me go ahead and convert my carbon dioxide to grams so I don't forget and enter it in the table as moles, which will be wrong. And that's 44.01. So 3.04 times 44.01 equals 133.8. And again, three sig figs, so it's just these three. So it's going to be 134 grams of CO2. So that will be reported in the table. This will be reported in the table. This will be reported in the table. At the, okay, so what's left? What's left is how much of the excess is left? This is excess. So you need to find out how much of that is used up for this amount of oxygen. Same thing. All right, it's the same relationship you've been doing. And that's one. So when you consumed 5.06 moles of oxygen, you consumed 1.012 moles of propane. Now, because I'm not done with my math, I'm not going to round this yet. But I'm going to remember that it's three sig figs, so I'm going to underline that. The question is not how much did you use, although sometimes that is one of the questions. It's how much is left. So now we are going to subtract what we started with of the propane minus how much we used this is why I am underlining the sig fig because I am now subtracting and that is placement, not counting. So my sig fig is going to be that decimal place. And you get 0 0.238 moles. This is my significant decimal place. So we're now down to two sig figs. Do you see that? This was three, this was three, but because we subtracted, it's not counting its location, the second decimal place, and now we are two sig figs. Now I'm not going to round because I'm not done. The answer, the question started out in grams, we have to go to grams. This is how much remains. In fact, I usually say remains, so I don't get confused. I'm going to convert that back to grams. I am not rounding yet because I'm not done with my math. And yes, I know I should have an identity here, but I'm running out of room. And it is 44.09. So really run out of room, haven't I? I have left, it's 10.49, okay? However, because we are now at two sig figs, it's 10. So the answer is 10. And if you want to say without question, that that's significant, you can put a dot there of propane left. And of course you have no oxygen left, you've consumed it all, right? So in that table, what goes in the bottom is 10 grams, zero, 134 grams, 72, 72.9, I can't read my own writing, grams, and 202 kilojoules. Let's go back and look at that table.
right? So under final, at the end of the reaction, what's left? That's your 10 grams goes here. Uh, yes, we had a sig fig change because of the subtraction step. Zero, we now, we made 134 grams of CO2. We made 72.9 grams of water and we, we made 202 kilojoules of energy. We released 202 kilojoules of energy. So that's how this table is filled out. Okay. So practice it, practice it, practice it. Um, really, this is, looks confusing, but you go through it a few steps and after a while, it, it won't be confusing anymore. Um, just follow the same steps every time and you'll be fine. All right, happy calculating. <laughs>